And guys, keep it going for Bonnie. Yeah. I'm following this wave that we started. Guys, I played a lot of D&D too. My favorite thing to play in D&D was a necromancer, actually. And I, I decided that one of my necromancer characters' kinks was that he only dated corpses. Dead ass. Everyone should play Dungeons and Dragons at least once. It builds character. I asked the, who was at the cabaret? I just want to know who I can't remember. One, two. God, I'm going to do all my jokes again. This is great. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the New York Times called Star Trek a quiet franchise. Are we a quiet franchise? No! no! Thank you, I will send this to him now. Or later. Cool, alright. Yeah, I'm a huge nerd. Like, I grew up watching Star Trek. I'm pretty sure my dad played Star Trek for my mom when she was pregnant with me. It's why my earliest memory is... By the way, fellas, if you girl has a long, beautiful neck, a cloak, disruptors, and photon torpedoes, that's not your girl. That's a Klingon D7 battle cruiser. <laughs> My man in the classic Kurt Green, you have had more costume changes than Loxana Troy on Rise of Weekend. I salute you. You're awesome, Ness. I have I just have the the Amazon brand Boimler jacket. That's all I'm working on right now. It was great. You know, for the longest time, I always wondered, like, what if there was a guy in Starfleet, like, who was just always slacking off, getting into fights on the ship, who was just a real asshole, and every time, he was like, oh, it was like aliens, or Q did it, or like, and then they were, like, altruistic, optimistic, Starfleet, you know, naive idiots, and they're like, oh, what could be uh, affecting this guy? Lower Decks did a friggin' episode about that, so I can't even joke about that anymore, but I, I, I love, I love Lower Decks so much. I love Strange New Worlds. I can't believe Star Trek fans crapped the bed so bad on Discovery Season 2 that they were like, okay, we'll do a show based on the unreleased pilot with Pike and number one, please like our show, right? Gotta love it. In, in Star Trek, we were introduced to things like transporters and warp drive, right? And replicate, food replicators. In Next Generation, they gave us the holodeck. They gave us data, right? In Voyager, we got gel packs, bioneural gel packs. And in Picard Season 3, we got paternity tests through eye contact. I love Picard. It's so cool. You know, these guys are in their 60s and 70s, and they're still boldly going to the bathroom every five minutes. It's awesome. I love the scene where they went to the fleet museum. Like, that was so fun. They're like, oh, look, it's the Defiant. Look, it's the Voyager. They're like, oh, yeah, it's the Klingon ship from the whale thing. Like, Damn it! Even in universe, they're calling it the one with the whales. Right? We gotta update the Picard monologue in First Contact, though. You know, because now apparently Bev and Picard boned after Nemesis and made Borg Jesus. <laughs> they invade all space and we fall back. They destroy all ships and we fall back. They assimilate my fucking balls and we fall back. <laughs> Not again. The line must be drawn here. This far, no further. And I will make them pay for these nuts! <laughs> Big ass nerd. I played a lot of Magic the Gathering. Any Magic yeah. the Gathering? Yeah. Tap that, yeah. Tap that, man. Magic the Gathering. You know, Netflix is trying to make an animated Magic the Gathering show. And they were going to get the Russo brothers, but they pulled out last minute. I knew they were going to mulligan their first hand. Alright, 50%. I got I got happy, you guys. Did anybody like Firefly, the television show? Yes. Do you want to hear my one Firefly joke? Yes. This is so cool. Okay. Um, two Reavers are hanging out. One Reaver was like, hey buddy, you want me to clean off that javelin for you? And the other one's like, nah, I'll run it through the wash. Oh. It was 2006, guys. Come on. Right? It's a great time to be a nerd. They announced a 
they announced a Mario movie and then Joe Biden was like, legal weed! <laughs> if I knew little 8-bit Princess Peach looked like Anya Taylor-Joy, I'd have had two reasons to jerk off to Mario games when I was a kid. Yeah. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, I'm your garden variety Brooklyn Jew. Uh, we've had a bunch of Jews in this lineup, yeah? Yeah, I, I love being a Jew. Being a Jew in America is so weird when you look like me, you know? It's like you're white when it's convenient, Jewish when it's not. Like, I don't want to be a full-time white guy. It's just the company keeps giving me shifts. It's just those fucking benefits, you know? But then, then the company has economic anxiety, and it's like, oh, you can't replace our full-time staff. It's like, bro, I'm a freelancer. Like, you said that from the start, you know? Like, you'll get that later. <laughs> My favorite Next Generation episode is the time loop episode, where they do the same things over and over again. Like, cause and effect, that's, I just, I love that one, you know? Yeah, it was a, so a very solid episode. Um, I think it was a little ridiculous, though, when they got to Voyager, and they just started calling the Doctor, the Doctor. I know Crusher was nobody's favorite character, but come on. Okay, I liked her. I liked her Ripley moment in Picard. That was fun. All right. Yeah. No, it was. It was cool. I like. Yeah. No, Picard. Picard is fun. It, it's. It's just like a Trekkie's dream. It was like. I thought Oscar Isaac was gonna pop out and be like, somehow, the Borg Queen returned. <laughs> we should. We shouldn't get too deep into it. The rivalry's dead. The hatchet's been settled. You know. Star Wars is as American as apple pie and rock and roll, and Star Trek is Rocket Club. I get it. I know. All right, Star Wars is uh, Star Trek is missionary. Star Wars is doggy style. You know, but, right? Star Star Trek is classic. Star Wars is jazz. You know, it's fine. I'm cool with it. There's still this isn't even a joke, but pound for pound, I still think we have more better hours of Star Trek than there are hours of Star Wars. Right? Yeah. And Star Trek, Star Trek's about shit that matters, guys. You know, it's the story of, a, of an Earth post-civil, post-racial conflict, post-poverty, post-scarcity economy. No hunger, no disease, no war. You know, science fiction. <laughs> I love all types of science fiction. I, you, you name it, I watch it. Steampunk, cyberpunk, cape punk, clock punk, biopunk, ocean punk, desert punk. <laughs> Clock punk, cassette futurism, Dune. Whatever the fuck that book is, right? I don't have a lot of Marvel jokes. I'm sorry. I know. I know some some Star Trek fans like to throw shit at Marvel. Like they think Marvel succeeded where 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 Star Trek failed. You know. I think it's just we burned out in 2005. They got started in 2008. Like you know. And then they did the signature thing at the end of Endgame, I know, that they, they ripped off of Undiscovered Country, but like, what are you gonna, you know. But I, I think it's cool, we got Moon Knight on, on Disney Plus now, and Moon Knight is the first Marvel Cinematic Universe Jewish superhero, guys. Yeah. And he gets his powers because he's enslaved by an Egyptian god. How on brand. You know, for a bunch of scrappy Lower East Side Jews that couldn't get hired writing novels to start a comic book company, the MCU has scrubbed Jews just completely out of existence quite efficiently. Getting shawarma after saving New York, those motherfuckers should have gotten bagels and you know it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone in the MCU comes back to life except Terrence Howard, you know? <laughs> Too soon? It was 2008! Like, my favorite Next Generation episode is the time loop episode where they say the same things over and over again, you know? Yeah. I'm the son of a theater critic, can you tell? That's why I'm thirsty for approval, you know? And my mom's a good theater critic, she's never walked out on a show, just me. Stop it, it's stand-up comedy, not stand-up truth. You guys are horrible. My wife is a stage manager. I love Broadway shows. Like, I, my mom tried to get me into things like art and culture and history and literature. And despite her best efforts, I turned out straight. But, 
But I've grown up seeing Broadway shows like two or three times a week. You know, that's gay on paper. My wife's a Broadway stage manager. She's been to Broadway twice. She's gonna be on again. She's done musicals. She never lets me forget that she's a Broadway stage manager. I set a record last night for lasting in the bedroom. She's like, and that's five. Thank you, five. <laughs> Gives me more time to watch Star Trek, you know? <laughs> and she doesn't even like Star Trek. For her, it's like, if there's Chris Pine, it's fine, you know? One time I was showing her like an episode of The Next Generation, she saw some pointy eared guy. She was like, is that, a, is that a Vulcan or a Romulan? I looked right over at her and proposed. <laughs> that joke was not that good. Are you good? Okay, you wow. Jeez. <sighs> My favorite Jewish holiday is Hanukkah. I love that one. We have a new candle for every night, we like the first and the second and the third, fourth, and then we get to the eighth candle, the spell is complete, Hitler stays dead for another year, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Zelensky for shattering the disloyal Jew narrative though, right? Like this guy's fighting like the biggest land war in Russia, or the biggest land war in Europe since World War III, and the guy is, like me, an Ashkenazi Eastern European Jewish comedian, you know? It's getting real bad with my mom now, because now it's not why aren't you a doctor, why aren't you a lawyer, now it's why aren't you a more successful comedian? <laughs> Fighting fascism in Europe. <laughs> you should invent a holiday for Zelensky, honestly. And fun fact, if you didn't know, Jews can make up a holiday whenever we want. Yeah, there's no central Jewish authority to stop us. We don't have a pope. We tried that, you fuckers crucified him, so. <laughs> So we just, you know, we'll, we'll get together at the beginning of February when the invasion started. We'll hide in the closet, we'll smoke weed, tell jokes, and we'll call it Uchronica. <laughs> Sometimes I think I smoke too much weed. I named my bong Stephen Bongheim. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you know you smoke too much weed when you break your bong and you're like, damn it, end of an era. You know? That was a better joke for you to have fallen down on, you know? <laughs> If I had what? If I had broken it? If I had broken my bomb when you fell? Okay. But I'm bomb, psh, that's the sound that a bomb makes when it fell. Okay. <laughs> everyone in my generation is polyamorous now. I don't, I don't have a segue into that, but like everyone in my generation is like banging other people, you know what I mean? And I don't, I'm not into that. Like, the idea of having to satisfy, like, multiple women at once terrifies me. And my wife is like, yeah, Alex, that's why we don't invite you. <laughs> I don't have a lot of other, like, dirty jokes, really. That's the problem. I just have Star Trek jokes, you know what I mean? I saw a Selena Gomez ad that was uh, being... A Sorry. I saw a Selena Gomez song being used for an Olive Garden commercial. And I thought, that's amazing, some ad exec figured out the two things that make me want to vomit the most. <laughs> eating Olive Garden or eating Selena Gomez. <laughs> Ooh, no. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I play to win no matter what. Um, let's get a little risque here. Bald black men who want to cosplay Picard. How do you do it? Because no matter what, you look like Cisco, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I, huh? With a French hand, I feel lonely and hopeless. <laughs> I, feel, I feel about as hopeless as a bald black guy trying to cosplay Picard. <laughs> there, okay, there it is. We found the, okay. We found the stay in your lane, Simmons. Stay in your lane. You know. All right, I'm gonna leave. you guys have been fun. You, you can, I feel like you, you like me, you know? Also, I don't think anyone's gonna like me, so I, I just have to stop. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I love you guys, too. I can tell all my nerdiest jokes. You guys are awesome, you know? Yeah. I'll leave you guys with this. Did you guys know that Will Smith turned down the lead role in The Matrix? Yeah. He turned down Neo, and Sean Connery turned down Morpheus. And that's weird, like, because I want to be like, first off, Frank and strange Neo is not without a stretch of irony, right? Like, <laughs> but what would 
would like the white people friendly hip hop tie-in song have been like? Like what would Will, what song would have Will Smith made for the Matrix? Like now this is a story all about how my life got flipped and slowed right down. I'd like to take a minute. I want to play tricks. I'll tell you how I became the one of a place called Matrix. <laughs> In a generic green city, born and raised in the office was where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, hacking, relaxing, all cool and all chasing white rabbits like a damn fool. When a couple of guys who were all dressed the same came to lock me up for my hacking name. I couldn't climb to the roof because I got too scared. And then they threw me on a table, put a worm in my feet. You know my favorite TNG episode is the time loop episode where they just keep saying and doing the same thing over and over. I just made up that rap song too. I literally just thought of that. All right, I'll leave. Okay, I'll leave you with this one epigram, and then Bonnie, we'll get Bonnie back up. They say that life is too short to hold a grudge. So therefore, upon my death, my estate will retain somebody to hold my grudges for me. <laughs> Good night! Give it up for Alex! Did you guys know that my favorite TNG episode was the time that just kept on? <laughs>